Okay, the purpose of this video is to give you a basic overview of how to use the TrueScore software and more importantly how to set up matches and run matches. Now I currently have this software set up where I don't have to have the electronics connected. So there's a couple things you won't see like the devices in the upper right hand corner but uh, the overview is just meant to show you how to use the software. So the very first thing you're going to do is go to program options and verify your head points, your body points, and your technical points. If there's a ceiling or a differential, you would have that here. Now this area up here is only meant if you're using like a dartfish type video software where you overlay the score. So this is almost, this will rarely be used by uh, most tournaments other than the real big ones. And here's where you see how many points it takes on overtime to win. The next thing you would do <clears throat> is you'd go to Ring Manager, you'd put in your names, and you could select your flags if you want. It's right here. Uh, or you can just type in the actual code. And how many rounds, how long the rounds are, what your rest period is. So we'll set to 30 seconds and whether or not use overtime. Now you can type in the gender and the weight. You can type in your Hoju hit level and in the event you're using electronic headgear you can even do the helmet level. Because of the touch rule we always leave the helmet level at one uh, just because it doesn't require a lot of effort to score a head kick and we put it in the lowest possible threshold. Now the newer software has a levels button and they come with some default levels. This is actually custom levels we use at our club. Um, but say I want to have people over 100 pounds, men or women, and then go ahead and, and select the thresholds, and it will configure what these thresholds will be and say OK. Or you can just basically type in the body and the helmet levels manually. Now the stuff up here is just for display. Uh, these thresholds are really the most important thing, so even if you use the level tables, um, the only thing that's paying attention to is just these thresholds. So once this is all set, you can also enter the match number up here as well. When it's all set, I'll go ahead and hit the start round button. Now it's real important, if this doesn't say ready, you're not going to be able to start a round. And there's a couple situations where it won't say ready. Uh, the most common situation is when the electronic devices, the chest transmitters or the triggers are not communicating properly. It will say not ready. It will also say not ready if you um, have not gone to your ring manager in between rounds. Those are the most common reasons. But when it says ready, you can go ahead and do two things. You can start a round or you can go to hardware test. Now, the hardware test screen, um, the very first time you run, I would have every judge pull all three triggers slowly uh, on the controllers just to make sure these light up. But every match, they're going to have red and blue kick each other, and you're going to watch these levels go up. It doesn't have to hit their threshold. You just have to see some sort of activity and the activity has to be on the proper person. So the square is going to be body, circle is going to be head. In most cases, you're just going to be watching the body column. So when you put it in test mode and have them kick each other, you're just going to give a thumbs up when you see activity on their behalf. So you need to start round. As you start round, make sure that you see this counting down. Because if it's not ready and you hit start round, it's going to be stuck there. And then one of the first rookie mistakes are you're going to be watching the fight and they'll be fighting away and the clock won't be running so it's real important because it gets the referees and the competitors very upset when the clock's not running when the referee stops the clock by saying she gone you hit time out if they give a penalty for instance if they say chung kyungo that would be blue half point you'll see this yellow down here when that happens and then they say sock and it will continue the match you'll hit resume all right now I'll go ahead and just uh, I'm gonna hit timeout I'm gonna simulate a few points here all right I'm gonna resume it so now they're 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 moving along and they say Kalio she gone timeout now they might say uh, Hong Gamjang, that would be a full point for red, hung is red. So I'm going to click the one point, which it gave an extra point to blue. Okay, if they said hung, 
Kyungo, again, red, half point. And so two yellows equal a red, so two half points equal a red. And you would resume the match. Now say there's a spin that wasn't counted or the referee is awarding. And you would have time out. They might say Chung, Bill Jump, which would mean one extra point. So you'd hit blue, tech point. Gives them an extra point. Or Hung, Bill Jump extra point. Okay, they might even give four. You would just hit it one, two, three, four times. Okay, now you resume the match. Now what happens if they just realized you gave one too many points to red? Okay, well you might have to adjust this. And you do not remove points by giving penalty to, the, to that person. Okay, what you do is you go to scoreboard. And there's a couple different versions of the scoreboard, but they work fundamentally the same, okay? If you want to remove a gamjam from red, you hit gamjam, remove, see how there's remove there? Which color, and hit apply. Let me move this so you can see it work. So when I apply it, see how it took away the gamjam, which basically reduced the score for blue, because you took the gamjam away from red. Now say we want to remove a kyungo from blue. You leave it at remove, go to Kyungo, uncheck Gamjam for blue, and hit apply. Now that beeping you hear is actually the fact that I paused the match for a full minute. So it's letting you know a minute's up. So now I say done, and I resume the match. Okay, another thing is, what if they say Kaoyo Shigan, you stop the clock. But then they say Keishi for a full minute injury time. I would just hit it one, two times, and just restart the one minute countdown up here. Because there is no injury time clock. But it will start counting, so what we would do is just, if you stop the clock for Shigan and 10 seconds go by, and you hit resume and timeout really quick, it just resets the clock, and you can watch the clock for a full minute. Resume the clock, and you'll proceed to finish the match. I'm going to superficially fast forward here to the end of this round all right we started round two all right so we go through let the match continue I'm gonna fast forward to the end of the match so it's the end of the complete match to one all right now, generally it's going to go ahead and just give you a final score, but you can change actually um, why the match was ended. KO, referee stops contest, you can choose those different options. Um, it's not done a lot, um, but you can go ahead and do that. And if you're using any type of automated um, score collection system, uh, it will go ahead and put the proper uh, reason the match was. But usually you would just see this screen and say OK. And that would be the end of the match. And you would go to Ring Manager, OK to go to the next fight. And that's it. Now if you go to Ring Manager, don't forget, you can change names if you want. You can also change even how many rounds, flags, levels. That's the whole point of going to Ring Manager. Sometimes the local tournaments, you just say, uh, leave uh, blue as Chung. Sometimes they leave red as Hong. And it's a really fast way to... Uh